triumphant entry as we mark this day all over the world is significant so God that nothing could hold you captive even in the grave you reign supreme Lord you stepped into Jerusalem on that faithful day Lord and you put a stop to everything that was going on negatively your presence changed the atmosphere of Jerusalem. Amen. And they began to scream and shout, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that came and has come in the name of the Lord. Lord, we pray this morning that many all over the world will experience that triumphant entry into their situation that would change the atmosphere of their home in the name of Jesus. In a home where there is sickness, where there is depression, where there is despair, Lord, we pray that you will march in there triumphantly for the God and give them a new song of victory in the name of Jesus. We pray for the God that you will step into New York City, Heavenly Father God, and let your presence change the atmosphere there right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray for the God do your triumphant entry into Italy, into Spain, and wherever, oh God, this pandemic, oh God, is ravaging. We pray for the God that the entrance of your word will bring light, will bring understanding to them in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray this morning, let the peace of the Holy Spirit, that pass at every man's understanding, who reign and rule in the hearts of your children. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that has come in the name of the Lord. Lord, come in power, come in glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Good morning for those of us at home. We just want to thank you and thank God for this uh, Palm Sunday. Uh, Palm Sunday is the day that people set aside to celebrate God's Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. I want to believe that this day that God will give us victory over anything that is holding us bound, that God will triumphantly march into our home, into our situation by the power of the Holy Spirit, for those who are sick in the hospital bed, we pray that God will march in there in mercy and the captives will be set free this morning. We thank God for his faithfulness. This morning, just have a word to encourage and to strengthen your faith in the Lord. That no matter what is going on, no matter what is happening, Jesus Christ is still Lord over all. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And nothing happened without God's permission or knowledge. No situation has ever taken God unaware. No situation has ever taken him by surprise. And so whatever we are facing today in the world and whatever you are going through individually, God has got you 
covered. And that is what I want to talk to you about this morning briefly to encourage you to let you know that God has got you. Amen. And so I want you, if you have your Bible with me, I just open to Psalm 3. I'll read from verse 1 to 6. And I read, Lord, how are they increased that troubled me? Mm. Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God's help. And maybe you may feel like that right now. Maybe that is the way you feel emotionally because of what you're going through or because of what is happening in the world. Verse 3. But thou, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. I cry unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me, and out of his holy hill, I lay me down and slept. Oh, I pray that the Lord, for those of us at home and here that is feeling so overwhelmed with the situation and sleep is no longer there for you, I pray that this triumphant Sunday will mark the beginning of a new day for you, that tonight, that yoke of sleeplessness will be broken and you will begin to sleep like a baby in the name of Jesus because fear and anxiety will give way. Verse, verse 5 said, I lay me down and slept and I wait for the Lord to sustain me. I will not be afraid of 10,000 of people that have set themselves against me round about. Amen. The Lord has got you. The Lord has got you covered. Listen to me, child of God. I just want to encourage you this morning. Like the psalmist said, the Lord, because God is with me, I will lie down and sleep. I want you to go to sleep knowing fully well that God is in perfect control of whatever you will go into or whatever the situation may be right now. Because our God and the love of God is not a legalistic love. I came to realize that this is why we have confidence in trusting God. This is the confidence we have in God. That God is not legalistic. God's love is the same in the Old Testament and is still the same in the New Testament. Our God does not change like shifting shadows. What God was yesterday is what he is today, and that is what he's going to be tomorrow. God is ever faithful, ever merciful, ever loving, ever forgiving, and ever compassionate, like we talked about last Sunday. The love of God and his mercy operate on one premise alone. One premise alone. And one premise alone. And the love of God, you know why I said it's not legalistic, it's not subject to do's and done. That's what I mean. It's not based on what you did or didn't do or what you're supposed to do. The love of God is not conditional on, a, or on your particular behavior or action. That's what I mean. You don't have to do anything to earn the love or the mercy of God. Amen. And isn't that comforting to know? The only thing that qualifies me and you to experience and to partake in the love and the mercy of God is what the Bible says in Psalm 34 verse 18. It talks about a broken and a contrite heart. That is all. A broken and a contrite heart. The Lord is near unto them that are of a what? A broken heart. And he says such as of what? A contrite spirit. That is all. In Psalm 51, verse 17, he said, The sacrifice of God are what? A broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart the Lord will not despise. So all it takes to get the attention of God in our dark situation is a broken heart. All it takes to get the attention and to experience the love and the mercy of God is a contrite spirit. And it's only a contrite spirit and a broken heart will cry out to God. 
So all it gets, all it takes for you and for me to experience the mercy of God, the compassion of God, the love of God, is a sincere cry for mercy. Have mercy on me, O Lord, according to your feeling, love, according to your compassion. The cry of a broken heart, the Lord will not despise. A cry of a contrast spirit, the Lord will not despise. All it takes to get heaven's attention is a sincere cry for mercy. Like blind Bartimaeus in the book of Mark of the third, the Bible says he cried out, he said, Have mercy on me, O thou son of David. That is all it took to get the attention of heaven. All it took to break the protocol of heaven was a sincere cry for mercy from a broken and a contrite heart. You can cry in Greek or Chinese, whatever language you choose to cry, but as long as that cry is coming from a broken and a contrite place, heaven will respond to you. Heaven will hear you because God is concerned about you. Blind Bartimaeus cried in Mark chapter 10, verse 4 to 7, said, And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, just like we're celebrating today, Palm Sunday, and we're hearing Jesus is marching into Jerusalem, and I see Jesus marching into every city, every home this morning. But are we going to cry out to him? And when Blind Bartimaeus heard that this is Jesus, and today I want to tell you Jesus is here. Jesus is close to you in your bedroom right now. He's close to you in your office. He's close to you wherever you are this morning because he's over the presence. And all it takes is for you to cry out to him in that situation like Blind Bartimaeus. All he heard was, I'm presenting to you the same Jesus that Blind Bartimaeus cried to that day. And blind Bartimaeus cried unto Jesus and said, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And people began to quiet him down. If you break the story, you can write it down in John, in Mark chapter 10. And they began to tell him, keep quiet. The Bible said the more they, they tried to shout him down, the louder he shouted. And that is to say, like a man said, beware of giving up too soon. Don't give up because you cried once and heaven has not responded. Amen. Don't give up because you cried yesterday and you woke up this morning the same way you went to bed yesterday. That does not mean it's time for you to give up. Don't let your emotion detect to you. Don't let what the news media is peddling detect to you. The fact that you woke up this morning and the news says more people died of this virus is not enough for you to give up hope. Beware of giving up too soon about the power and the message of God even in this critical time. Listen to me, child of God. Blind Bartimaeus cried out to God. He cried and he kept on crying. And suddenly heaven stopped because of him. And I believe heaven is about to stop because of somebody's cry for mercy today. Heaven is about to come into your home because you cried from a place of sincerity, from a place of brokenness, from a place of humility, from a place of total desperation, knowing fully well that if the Lord does not do it, it's not going to be done this morning. And this is what God is expecting of us. Don't let anybody stop you from crying out. Don't let anybody discourage you from crying out. Listen to me. I know people say, oh, don't do it this way. He said, listen, people talk because they've never been in trouble. <laughs> Amen. People are dignified because they've never been in trouble. God doesn't care whether I read it in Old Testament, whether I speak it in Greek or in Latin. All he wants to know is that is my heart right? Yes. This is what I mean. God is not legalistic. God is not taking stock of me, saying did I pray to him based on the Old Testament or the New Testament. God is the same is a merciful God. What God sees is that my child is in trouble. And have you ever seen a man in trouble? Have you ever seen a woman in trouble? You throw all caution to the winds. A man in trouble doesn't know seven steps. 
to prayer. All he knows is, help me, I'm dying. And you think heaven is going to wait for me to follow the seven steps that have been taught by my pastor before he answers me? No, God is not that wicked. <coughs> He's not legalistic. He's a loving and compassionate God. Amen? Amen. So we encourage child of God. God knows us better than we know ourselves. And he knows exactly what we need and when we need it. So, child of God, <coughs> you may be feeling so broken because of what is happening today. Are you feeling helpless and overwhelmed right now because of what is going on? I want to let you know God has got you. Are you feeling depressed and alone because of the situation that we find ourselves in right now? I want you to know that God has got you. Are you feeling overweighed, weighed down and encumbered with the cares of this life? <coughs> My throat dries out quickly. Excuse me. God has got you. Because of the lockdown, are you feeling so sad and alone and suicidal this morning? I want you to know God has got you. Are you feeling so emotionally weak and tired because of the situation you're going through? Feeling scared and anxious about the future because of what is happening in the world? <coughs> People are losing their jobs. People are dying all around us. Does those news you read on the internet and you hear in the news and TV, did that get you so overworked and overwhelmed? God has got you covered. Do you feel defeated and frustrated right now? God has got you. Maybe because you've lost your job. And maybe your situation did not just start with this lockdown. Maybe your problem started with, and, and this is the Excuse me. This is the bad part of this virus situation. Suddenly, we have forgotten every other, situ every, every other uh, person's problem. Nothing matters anymore. That can also be overwhelming to some people. There are a lot of people now who are sick with different ailments. They can't go to the hospital because suddenly their issue is no longer important. Some people, before this virus issue came up, they were dealing with divorce and separation and suicidal thought and depression. And suddenly, nobody is talking about that right now. Suddenly, your life is taking the back seat. And because of that, you're feeling so lost and confused. There's nobody to talk to anymore because your issue is no longer important. You're going through this all alone. I want you to know that God has got you. Do you feel betrayed and abandoned by the system that is supposed to take care of you? Do you feel betrayed and abandoned by those who are supposed to love and care for you? I want you to know God has got you. For those who are working in the front line, of this present situation, do you feel so fatigued and worn out, yet you just have to keep on keeping on? I want you to know that the Lord has got you. And for so many of us this morning, all over the world, do you feel spiritually lost and disconnected because you've lost the sense of fellowship that you're used to? Yes. I want you to know God has got you. It doesn't matter where you are this morning. Feeling discouraged and fearful, you are not alone, my brother, my sister. These emotions that I just mentioned, some of those things that I mentioned this morning, are emotions that many of us are dealing with and many more.
But the good news is that you are not alone. You are not the first to feel the way you feel right now. And the fact that you're feeling this way does not mean that you're no longer a child of God, that God doesn't care about you anymore, or because you, and people can say, oh, where is your faith? Child of God, you can be a man or woman of faith. You can still go through this downtime and these seasons and this valley experience of life. David is a classical example. The Bible says he was a man after God's own heart, but he went through this. Even Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the one that was celebrating his triumphant entry. Today, a few days after that triumphant entry, he was back in the Garden of Gethsemane crying and pleading to God in despair and in pain, in aloneness and loneliness. So being alone and being lonely, being frustrated, being tired, feeling dejected, feeling in the terms of frustration is not an indictment against you. It doesn't mean that God has forgotten you. It doesn't mean that you're not a child of God anymore. It just means you're going through a season, but every season has an aspiring date. Amen, yes sir. No season lasts forever. No season is permanent. And this is a season in our lives. And this season too shall pass. We must learn to act like David in the time of this kind of winter season emotionally. You may be going through this valley of despair. I want you to know that you are not alone. David said to us in Psalm 42 verse 5, he said, why are you downcast to my soul? And I say back to you, child of God, whatever your emotional state is right now, whatever you are going through right now, why are you downcast to my soul? Why are you disquinted in you? Hope in God, because he's got you. For I shall yet praise him for he is the help of my countenance. I have come to tell you this morning, do not settle in the valley of despair and defeat. Don't settle there. Don't stay there. I want you to look up this morning. Don't look down in dejection. Don't look down in hopelessness. Don't look down in fear. Don't look down in frustration. Don't look down in the feet. Look up, for your salvation is nearer than when you first believed. Our victory is nearer than when we first entered into this lockdown. Our breakthrough is nearer than when this whole issue started. Yes. The Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 13, verse 11, and that knowing the time. Knowing the time and the season. The Bible says in the book of Chronicle, it says the sons of Issachar who understood the times and the season. There is a time for everything under the sun, says the wise man in the book of Ecclesiastes. There is a time for killing and a time for rising. There is a time and season for everything. And it says the sons of Issachar who understood the times. And I listen to people today. <clears throat> On Facebook, on the news, uh, mighty men of God by our own definition, worldly standard, and many people are making decisions based on carnal news and carnal prediction. People are not spending time. Yes, the government has spoken. Yes, the doctors have spoken. Yes, the scientists have spoken. But what has God said? Let us hear what God is saying. Tell us what the Lord is saying in this time. And the Bible says, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Sleep is a state of emotional disposition and despair. Sleep is a state of frustration. Sleep is a state of tiredness. Sleep is a state of depression and despair. And the Lord is saying, I want to change the time. A season, a new season is coming. You say, awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. 
We are closer to the finishing line. <clears throat> Do what David did in his time of despair and frustration. Listen to what David says in Psalm 61, verse 1 and 2. Hear my cry, O God, like I said to you, the cry of mercy that heaven listens to is a cry from a broken heart, from a place of brokenness, a place of humility. And you can cry, it doesn't matter whether you cry in Hebrew, in Greek, in Latin, in French, in broken English or correct English. God is not interested in that. What God sees is the heart and the sincerity of my cry and how desperate I am for God's intervention. God's love is not legalistic. In a time of trouble, I can call him in Greek. I can call him from Genesis. I can call him from his word in the book of Psalms in Matthew. It doesn't matter. All I know is that I'm calling upon the God that can and who is able to do abundantly above all that I can ever think or imagine. All God is interested is in my heart. And David said, hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer, Psalm 61, verse 1. He said, from the ends of the earth. From the ends of the earth. Will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Child of God, I want to present to you. The solid foundation in the times of trouble, the rock, the rock, the rock. There is a rock higher than pain. There is a rock that is higher than your frustration. There is a rock that is higher than your depressed state right now. There is a rock that is higher than the doctor's report right now. There is a rock higher than the banker's report and the economic forecast right now. There is a rock. David said, lead me to a rock that is higher than I. Higher than my problem. Higher than my trials. Higher than my frustration. Higher than this marital frustration that, my, that you may be going through. There is a rock higher than that. There is a rock higher than everything that you've been facing. And that rock is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Awesome. That rock is Jesus Christ. Amen. And that rock is the only one that can sustain you, that can uphold you. And I dare to tell you, lying alone in our home right now, suicide is not the answer. Suicide is not the answer, and it won't help you. All you need is to look out and reach out to that rock of ages. Deuteronomy 32 verse 4 says, He is the rock, and his work is perfect. Jesus is that rock. When Moses was going through his own time of confusion and aloneness, and David, Moses said, Lord, if you do not go with me, do not take me any further. And so in Exodus chapter 33, the Lord said unto Moses, verse 21, the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me where you shall stand upon the rock. And that rock, whatever you're going to right now, I want to present to you that rock. There is a place by God where you will stand. And he said, I shall come to pass while my glory passed by, that I will put you in the cleft of that rock. There is a place where you can stand. There is a place where you can stand with your children. There is a place in the midst of this pandemic and the, the negativity that is going on, the fear that has been peddling around. There is a place you can stand secure. The Lord said to Moses, say, there is a place near me where you might stand. He said, and I will open, I will cleft the rock, and I will hide you. And Jesus Christ is that rock. Jesus was pierced, and blood and water gushed, and opening up that rock so that we can go in and hide. There is a place for you to hide. Jesus is that place. And until you find your place in that place, there are places, but there is one place. 
where you can find safety in this trying time. There is only one place where safety is guaranteed. There is only one place where joy is guaranteed. There is only one place where peace that passes every man's understanding is guaranteed. And that place is on the rock. The rock of ages. Cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood. There is a place near God. And this is where we need to be. In this trying time, in this difficult time, if God is going to get you, he's going to have you, and if the mercy of God is going to reach you, you have to step into that place. And the Lord is inviting you in the midst of this commotion that is going on in the world. There is a place where safety is guaranteed. <clears throat> Jesus, in this great day, on this day that we celebrate his triumphant entry, the rock is here and say, come, come to me. Everyone that is heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come to this place of rest. And if you read, if you read Exodus 33, verse 21 and 22, the Lord said unto Moses, he said, there's a place near me where you will stand. He said, I will hide you in that rock and I will cover you with my hands. <laughs> Listen to me, child of God. There is so many distractions going on as we pray. There is so many news going around. Why don't we go high where Jesus will save us from all this commotion that is going on in the world, all this speculation, all this conspiracy theory, all this speculative theology. That is not important. The King is coming and the Lord God is here. The Kingdom of God is here. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is inviting you to a place of safety. He is calling you to a place of compassion. He's calling you to say, come to me, and I will hide you from all this commotion, and you will find peace for your soul. Child of God, if you don't know this Jesus, only him can make things happen. He is the way where there is no way. He is the light to him that is dark in darkness. He is the bridge over every troubled water. He is the healer to him or her that is sick this morning. It is joy to him that is sorrowful and depressed this morning. He is the joy giver. He is the peace giver. He is the ocean divider. He is the bondage breaker. He is the only one that makes a way where there seems to be no way. Come to Jesus and you will find rest for your soul. God has got you covered. God has got this. This too shall pass. But when all the storms is over, are you going to be standing on a sinking sand or are you going to stand and be standing on a solid rock? This um, immovable, unshakable rock of ages is the only one that can keep you safe at a times like this. It is going to get tougher, but in Christ Jesus, we are more than conquerors. We are more than victorious. And if you don't know Jesus, I beg of you, child of God, in your home there, you can kneel down and say, Lord Jesus, I just want to know you. Blind Bartimaeus, all he did was for Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. There is no grammar to it. It's a cry for mercy, and heaven will respond to you. And God will reveal himself to you where you are right now. All you need to do is say, Lord Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Open my spiritual eyes to behold your glory. Give me understanding of who you are. And he will show himself to you. Thank you. Let's pray. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we we'll thank you for this glorious day that you have made. We pray for hope to rise in the hearts of your people this morning. Help us to know that you've got us covered. Lord, for those who are so fearful and even cannot sleep, Lord, even as David said, I lay my head to sleep. <coughs> this morning, I just want to pray only for those who have difficulty in sleeping. Before this crisis started, and after this crisis and in the midst of this crisis. 
Whoever has trouble with sleeping, in the name of Jesus, I break the yoke of anxiety, fear, and worry over your mind, and I speak the peace of the Holy Spirit over your mind right now. From today, by the mercy and compassion of God, receive the peace that passes understanding. May you lay that when you hit your head on the pillow today, you will go to sleep like a baby and you shall wake up tomorrow morning strong and rejuvenated in the name of Jesus. Thank you, eternal rock of ages. We thank you, we bless you. If you are sick in your body, or you are afraid of this virus, or you know anybody who has that, and they are in need of prayer, if they give us permission, I'm willing to go anywhere to pray for you. And if I have to pray for you over the phone, call us. Call the church, send us a private message, and we will believe God for your healing and deliverance. God is still in the business of healing. It doesn't matter what the world is saying. And I believe in that God, I trust in him, and I know he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. The Lord bless you and have a wonderful past Sunday. God bless and see you soon. Amen.